e equity and inclusion. It's called DEI in our training. But some are confused about the difference between equity and equality. They sound alike, but they are different. Yeah, leadership expert Beth Ridley joins us now to help us understand how the two concepts actually complement one another. But first, we got to understand the difference. Great yeah, to see you. Good to see yeah, you. good to see you both. It is everything I think people are talking about yeah. lately. So explain just first the background on it. Okay, so simple explanation. You can think of equality as the desired outcome that we want at work, right? So okay. everyone feels equally valued and respected, has equal chance to have a successful career with equal access to resources and opportunities. Okay. But equity is the pathway to which you achieve that equal outcome because we have to recognize at work people are different. You have different strengths, weaknesses, educational background, life experiences. So if you give everyone the same, you might not achieve equal outcomes. So equity is just about being flexible and giving people what they need in order to succeed. Got it. So which one do you say is better or is there not one that's better than the other? Yeah, really good question. Neither are better, but you actually need both. They're very complementary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you have an example that you want to give us to sort of help people understand the true difference between equity and equality? Yeah, so here's a really uh, simple example. Um, so we practice equity a lot in our everyday. I think the best example is when we take a group photo, yeah. right? So we've got a lot of people. We want uh, everyone to look equally good in the picture, but we know that everyone is of different heights. So we naturally say, oh, smaller people, could you get in the front? Taller people, stand in the back. Yeah, you taller, want everybody to be seen. You want yeah. everybody to be seen. Taller people crouch down. And so, you know, we had to be flexible. We naturally knew we were different heights. And so it required a little bit of accommodation on everybody's side. But the end result is a picture where we're all equally seen and we all equally look good. See, okay. I love that example because I think everybody A has experienced it. B, there's no like knee jerk reaction, but but I don't yeah. I don't like this or something. It's like it just makes sense. Yeah. And and it honestly is like I think the perfect example of everything you're trying to say here. Yeah. So talk about leaders and the the workplace because that's really where a lot of this is coming to the forefront of conversation. How can people and leaders put in policies with that equity lens to truly make the workplace better? I think that's a great way if you want to like drive some of your DEI uh, efforts at work is to apply an equity lens to policies. And really the question is, where do we have things where one size fits all may not be the best approach? Mm -hmm. um, and it really comes down to just asking employees what do they uniquely need to be successful? So I think that's probably one of the best places to start and to just ask that question. One size fits all. Maybe we can be a little bit more flexible. Do you think we all know, though, what we need? Can we uh, answer that, do you think? I, I think the problem is we're not often asked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think we can um, do a lot of, a better job simply by asking. And I know a lot of leaders, the pushback I get is, OK, but we can't do everything for everybody and make everyone happy. And that is true to some extent. Mm -hmm. But I think too often we don't even ask the question to have the conversation. And generally, we can make small uh, changes that really don't cost a lot of money or take a lot of time that can go a long way for an employee to feel supported for their unique need to be successful. Well, I think it's such a good point that people perhaps don't know how to answer that question mm -hmm. because they haven't never been, been asked. asked. Yeah, which is interesting. So how can leaders then sort of rethink the workplace, you know, th th thinking about policies and sort of adjusting, because you talked about flexibility, adjusting the lens to improve the experience then for the people who work there. So here's a real tangible example, right? So burnout is a big issue at work that a lot of managers are trying to like minimize. And so I had a client who said, well, the cause of my burnout is it, I'm just working too much. So I'm going to do a one size fits all, go to a four day work week. Like who wouldn't want that? Yeah. Well, it turns out not everybody wanted that. And so <laughs> some employees have a different relationship with time off. Some really yeah. use the Fridays to regroup. Others use the Fridays to work more and they were more burned out. So she went back and asked everybody, like, how, what do you need to minimize stress and anxiety? So for some people, it's, I just need to come in a little bit later on certain days. Mm -hmm. For some, it was, I need to leave a little bit earlier on some days. And some said, I don't mind, you know, not working. I just want to be able to talk to somebody about the stress that I'm having at work without being judged. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times the solutions was easier than trying to implement this big plan 
of you know a four day work week. Interesting. Hmm. That's why I think it's important for even managers or leaders to talk about it. Because like you said, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they just think, well, I'm not even going to ask the question because I'm not going to be able to make people happy. So if I get the answer and I can't do it, I've made a bigger problem. Yeah. What, what is your, your kind of final sort of takeaway for them? Always just ask and explore. Chances are there are a lot of small things that we can do that are going to make a big difference. But it, it's worth at least asking the question because we'll never know if we don't have the conversation. Like Such it. a good be afraid of the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And I think it's not even just the workplace. So many other areas of our lives we need to be talking about equity and equality. Yeah. Well, and again, fantastic. we do it intuitively. As a parent, you don't treat each of your children the same because you know right. they've got different personalities. Exactly. So, so we do embrace equity very intuitively to have an equal outcome of all our kids are equally happy. I think just sometimes we have to get over that mental block like, oh, it's, you know, special treatment or yeah. I can't do everything to make everybody happy. Yep. But we do it in other ways. I think we just have to have that more open mindset to do it at work. My mom always said fair doesn't mean equal. Uh, yeah, yeah, with kids, it's, it's definitely true. Well, your sure. mom's a DEI expert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Good Thanks. to see you. For more resources, tips, and ideas to improve your workplace culture, you can visit RidleyConsultants.com.